Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss isolation of gate and base drives. Now, one needs to understand why isolation has to be provided for gate or base driving of the transistors. In this session, I'll discuss two particular scenarios in which isolation can be of larger help. Let us look into the first scenario here. As you can see, we have a simple BJT switch here which uses a triggering circuit and we have a 200 volt supply across the collector to emitter. When you look at the voltage levels, the triggering circuitry usually operates at a lower voltage level compared to the collector to emitter voltage. Now, by some means, if the collector to emitter gets shorted, this can directly impact in a negative way on the triggering circuit also which can damage the triggering circuit. Therefore, we say there is a need for isolation of both gate and base drives for a transistor. This is the first scenario. Looking into the second scenario now, for operating power transistors as switches, an appropriate gate voltage or base current must be applied to drive the transistors into the saturation mode or low on state voltage. The control voltage should be applied between the gate and the source terminals or between the base and emitter terminals of the MOSFET or BJT respectively. The power converters generally require multiple transistors and each transistor must be gated individually. This is very important. The transistors must be gated individually. Now in the diagram here, we have a single phase bridge inverter. The main DC is Vs with ground terminal represented by G. Now for the logic circuit of the same is shown in this part of the diagram. Now we also have the gate pulses for the four transistors used for the bridge inverter. These pulses are shifted in time to perform the required logic sequence for power conversion from DC to AC. However, all four logic pulses have a common terminal represented by C. The common of the logic circuit may be connected to the ground terminal G of the main DC supply through a simple connection between these two points. Now coming to the logic generator circuit, the terminal G1 which has a voltage of VG1 with respect to the terminal C cannot be directly connected to the terminal G1 of the MOSFET. The signal VG1 should be applied between the gate terminal G1 and the source terminal S1 because we just stated the control signals must be provided between the gate to source that is they have to be gated individually. So if I perform this operation then the logic generator voltages for the MOSFET Q1 will be supplied between G1 and S1 and for Q4 it will be supplied between G4 and S4. This is what is the requirement. But if you make a common connection between G and C between the main circuit and the logic generator then for the transistor Q1 the voltage VG1 generated by the logic generator will be connected between G1 and the ground terminal. Therefore, there is a need for isolation and interfacing circuits between the logic circuit and the power transistors. However, transistors Q2 and Q4, sorry, Q2 and Q4 can be gated directly because their source terminals are connected to the ground terminal of the main circuitry. Now, the importance of gating a transistor between its gate and source rather than applying the gating voltage between the gate and the common terminal can be demonstrated by this simple circuit. Now here what we have done is the load resistance is connected across the source terminal of the MOSFET here and the effective gate to source voltage VGS can be written as VGS is equals to the gate voltage minus the load resistance multiplied by the drain current. But for the transistor Q4, the gate current, sorry, the drain current 
is not a function of IDS because its source is directly connected to the common ground terminal. However, when I take into consideration the transistor Q1, the source terminal is not connected to the ground terminal of the main circuitry and therefore its drain current will be a function of the gate to source voltage which will also take into effect the overall resistance created by the transistor Q4. Therefore, we write an equation for VGS as gate voltage minus of the load resistance multiplied by the drain current but now the drain current is a function of the gate to source voltage itself. The effective value of the gate to source voltage decreases as the transistor turns on and VGS reaches a steady state value which is required to balance the load or drain current. The effective value of VGS is quite unpredictable and such an arrangement is therefore said to be not suitable. Hence, we state there are basically two ways of floating or isolating the control or gate signal with respect to the ground. Please note these are particularly applicable for G1 and G3. G2 and G4 can be directly gated because their source terminals are connected to the common ground. And we require separate gating signals for G1 and G3 because their source terminals are not connected to the common ground. And therefore, the logic generator should be used separately for G1 and G3. Now coming to the commonly available techniques, we stated there are two basic ways of floating the uh, control or gate signal with respect to ground. The first one is called as the pulse transformer and the second one is called as the optocoupler. Now let us discuss each one of them individually. Now this is what is a transformer isolated gate drive would look like. Pulse transformers have one primary winding and can have more than one secondary windings. Multiple secondary windings allow simultaneous gating signals to series as well as parallel connected transistors. The transformer should have a very small leakage current, sorry, very small leakage inductance and the rise time of the output pulse should be very small. At a relatively long pulse and low switching frequency, the transformer would saturate and its output would be distorted. So this is about the pulse transformer. Now coming to the second type of providing isolation for control or gate signals is the optocoupler technique. Optocouplers combine an infrared LED and a silicon phototransistor. The input signal is applied to the ILED and the output is taken from the phototransistor. The rise and fall times of the phototransistors are very small. Typically, the values range between 2 to 5 microseconds for turn on and for turn off it is about 300 nanoseconds. These turn on and turn off times limit the high frequency applications of the transistors. <clears throat> the gate isolation circuitry using the phototransistor that can be shown here is using a Darlington pair for sorry it is using a Darlington pair and the base of the Darlington pair is driven by the phototransistor here. Now the phototransistors require separate power supply and therefore would add up to the complexity as well as the cost and the weight of the overall driving circuits. So this is about the requirement and analysis of providing isolation between the base and gate terminals of the transistors. Thank you.